hey, what's going on folks? Welcome back to another Hey Techie video. Apologies for the long gap between this video and my last. Unfortunately, my dad passed away last month, so I took a bit of time away from making these videos, but I'm back now. Here at Hey Techie, we're interested in all things smart home, especially to do with an Apple HomeKit setup. So if that sounds like the kind of thing you're interested in, make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button now. I've got plenty of new videos planned over the next coming weeks, and all the latest and greatest smart home devices will be featured here on this channel, so make sure you don't miss out. Also, check out my Instagram page over at Hey Techie, where I upload even more content every other day to make sure you go over there and take a look. As you might have gathered from the background, today's video is a follow-up from a previous one. A few months ago, I looked at the Robert R3000 robot vacuum cleaner, and I made it an unboxing video and offered a few initial thoughts. If you haven't seen that video, make sure you go check it out there first, as I explain how I got this robot vacuum to integrate with my Apple smart home setup using SwitchBot. Since then, the robot has been in near daily use, and now I'm excited to be able to share my thoughts and my full review with you. So without any further ado, let's get into it. I mentioned before that I was in the market for a smart robot vacuum cleaner, and when Robert offered me the chance to review this vacuum, I jumped at the opportunity. They did send me this sample product for free, however, as with all of my products and reviews, Hey Techie has a firm rule that we only offer our full, unbiased opinion on products provided to us to review. So, whilst I was given this for free, everything I say in this video is my complete and unadulterated honest opinion. When you receive your Robert R3000, it comes in a rather large white box which has everything you need to operate this robot vacuum inside. Inside the box, there's the robot itself, a charging dock, cables, spare brushes, and a cleaning tool. Remember, if you want to integrate this product with an Apple smart home, you'll need a third-party product like SwitchBot to make it happen. Robert claimed that the R3000 itself has a suction pressure of 2,500 pascal, or 2.5 kilopascal. Now, for those of us who don't know that much about vacuums, you're probably wondering what this means, but more specifically, you're probably wondering how exactly does this compare to your regular vacuum cleaner that you already have in your home? Most conventional vacuums have about 20 kilopascals of suction, which means that on paper, the Robert R3000 is eight times weaker than a conventional vacuum cleaner. Now, this shouldn't be surprising considering that firstly, this is a small robot vacuum, and secondly, it's powered by a small battery and not the mains. But the question if this vacuum is worth having is something I'm gonna to return to later, but I'd ask you to bear the fact that it's eight times weaker in mind. The Robert is powered by a lithium ion battery, which Robert claim gives you 120 minutes of constant cleaning. The amount of time that the Robert lasts does vary based on what mode the vacuum is on and on what surface you're using the vacuum on as well. The robot has what Robert calls boost tech, which means that the vacuum automatically increases its suction power when moving from a hard floor to a carpeted area. It also has a high suction setting, which you can use all of the time, to maximise all of that suction power that is on board, but both of these modes do drain the battery a little bit more compared to the regular suction mode. The maximum power mode is a bit louder, but I've never found it too loud myself, and I can actually comfortably sleep through it working around the bedroom at night. It should be noted though that the Robert R3000 is only suitable for hard floors and for low pile carpets. So if you have a thicker fluffy carpet or a rug, this device might actually damage it and itself in the process. So bear that in mind. It's also a dry only vacuum, so you'll not be able to use it on wet floors or for mopping like other models on the market. The vacuum has various sensors on board which detect cliff edges like stairs and to prevent it bumping into your household furniture, features which are standard on these kinds of devices. However, there is no LiDAR technology on board, so this robot will not map your home with which to reference itself for future cleaning. As a result, on the various cleaning modes, it can feel like the vacuum is just moving around randomly and ultimately provides complete coverage by going over the same spot several times purely by chance rather than by design. 
Now, in a small room, that's not an issue, but in a larger home or an apartment, this might be something to bear in mind. The vacuum doesn't have Wi-Fi on board either, so there's no app for this machine and officially no smart home support either, but as I've demonstrated before, this can be done through other means. The R3000 also has a triple filter system with a HEPA certified filter, which is able to pick up, so Robert claim, 99.9% .9 of dust, pollen and mould from your floors and carpet. When I first opened the Robert, I was immediately struck with its sleek design. I also immediately noticed the power button on touch was a touch control button, but after having the device for some time now, I can safely say that it's completely redundant and I've never used it. I control this vacuum using the remote and Siri controls the entire time. The vacuum itself is just under 3 inches in height, so it's slim enough to get under beds and most tables, but in my experience it's struggled with sofas. Generally speaking though, the vacuum is about the right size for its job, and the circular design is rather helpful in getting into the edges of a room with the little brushes underneath. If we flip the robot over, we can see the underworkings. There's a red master switch which controls the power supply of this battery powered robot. It's powered by a 2600 milliamp hour lithium ion battery, which takes about five to six hours to charge through these two metal connectors at the front of the device that offers you in total that two hours of cleaning. Now in my preliminary tests, the robot actually exceeded that, offering nearly 130 minutes instead. However, this was on the automatic basic mode only on hard floors. When used on maximum power, I've still been getting about 100 minutes of cleaning, which I'm pretty impressed with considering that this vacuum can find its way back to the power dock when it needs to, and charging really isn't an issue for this device. Robert states that you need to keep a distance of 2 meters either side and 1 meter clear in front of the dock itself for the vacuum to find its way back but my vacuum has been extremely successful with docking with a fraction of that space around it. Having said that, if I could critique the dock, I would critique it for being too light, and if the vacuum makes a mistake in getting back to the dock, which happens maybe 1 in 10 times, it can knock the dock out of its position and then struggle to mount itself properly. Now, this can be easily remedied by securing the dock to the floor or to the wall with some sort of sticky pad, because over the longer term this is pretty annoying, but there is an easy fix. To the edges, we see two small white pegs on which you'll need to mount two cleaning brushes, which sweep the dust and crumbs into the middle of the hoover's path and onto the roller in the middle. The roller is removable so that you can clean it easily, and this is absolutely essential because this roller really will need cleaning. If you have long hair, or live with someone who does, or if you have a pet, this roller is a magnet for catching hair in its roller, and within a few days you'll need to maintain the brush itself. The vacuum comes with a little tool for this purpose specifically, and the roller itself has cleverly has little groove which allows the tool, or scissors or whatever else you want to use, to easily cut through the hair that has wrapped itself around the roller. The brushes though have no such defence, and I've found they can get bent out of shape really quite quickly as a result. They're easily fixed though, and I've had to give mine a trim a few times because some of the bristles have become unusable. From time to time, if these brushes get caught in a power cord or a charging cable that you've left lying around, the little brushes can disconnect to prevent the device getting damaged, and that's a good design, it just means you have to go and hunt them afterwards. You can buy replacements easily enough though if you lose them or if you need new ones, and the vacuum itself does come with a few spare. Now I haven't used my spare ones yet, so I would say that these brushes have a bit of longevity to them, but only if you maintain them. Also on the underside, there is the dust box, which has about 500 milliliters of space. It's not huge, and considering the suction power of the Robot, it fills up really, really fast. 
on Amazon, robots say you won't need to empty it regularly, but such is the performance of the robot, I would actually disagree with this. I do empty it regularly because it's pulled so much dust out of my carpets, but I'll caveat this remark further when we move on to discuss the test string results. Since Hey Techie is all about devices which can work within the Apple smart home setup, it would be remiss of me not to recap this information quickly. If you want to find out more about this, check out my last video which I give a detailed account of how to do it, since I don't want to repeat myself too much here. The Robert R3000 doesn't have Wi-Fi on board, and because of this we can't connect it to a smart home in this way, like you might other robot vacuums. Instead, I've taken advantage of the infrared remote control used to manually control this vacuum cleaner. By using SwitchBot's excellent Hub Mini, I've programmed the basic controls of the vacuum into Siri shortcuts, thus enabling control of the vacuum using Siri, which is pretty awesome. Now, because it's not HomeKit enabled, this functionality can be a little bit spotty at times though. Notably, if the vacuum gets stuck for any reason and then it runs out of power, I have found that I'll need to set up the Siri shortcut again for the device, which is a little bit annoying. And for this reason, I tend to only run the vacuum when I'm home, and I can save the device from going flat should it get stuck anywhere. The other flaw is that the vacuum needs to be in range of the SwitchBot Mini Hub in order for this functionality to work as well, because essentially I'm using Siri to act as a remote for the device, and so we're still limited by the range of the remote. Now, that's okay in my office because the vacuum and the SwitchBot Hub are in the same room, but if the vacuum goes down the hall and into another room, it will ultimately lose that connectivity. As a result, I find that I'm able to turn on the vacuum reliably using Siri, but once it leaves the immediate vicinity, I'll have to go back after the vacuum with the regular remote to send it back again. Now of course, you could just leave it to run low on battery and then automatically return to its docking station, but as mentioned a moment ago, if it gets stuck, you'll need to set up the Siri shortcut again. Now sure, that only takes two minutes to do, but it does defeat the purpose of a smart home if you're going to have to do this regularly. So with all of that being said, how does the Robert R3000 perform in the real world? Well, in order to test the Robert out to its maximum ability, I brought it to the toughest place I could find to test it out, a student house. Now these are seriously low quality carpets that have almost never been maintained. So the footage that you've been seeing in this video is raw, unedited footage of the vacuum's performance under the hardest conditions I could find. So you can judge just for yourself how it holds up. So the first room I tested the R3000 in was one of the bedrooms. And this is the condition that the carpet was in prior to the Robert being used. You can see there's thick dust and a range of particles all over the carpet and it looks quite nasty. Now, after the Robert got to work, you can see here just how well those brush motors are able to deal with the bigger pieces of dust. However, you can also see that it struggles a bit with the finer elements on the carpet. And this is where I would encourage you to remember that this little device is eight times weaker than a conventional vacuum cleaner. I think strong vacuum cleaners would struggle on the carpet that this is being tested on, and perhaps it's an unfair comparison to make. Having said that, the room was noticeably better after the Robert had done its thing. So it wins there, but it's under some seriously difficult conditions. So perhaps it's wrong of us to expect it to have got out that deeply ingrained dirt. Credit where it's due, by the time the Robert had passed over the carpet a few times, all of the larger particles of dust had been picked up off the floor, and although a lot of small debris remained, I was quite impressed. Where the Robert really excelled was on the hard, tiled floors, and that is perhaps expected considering that robot vacuum cleaners have an excellent reputation on these surfaces. The Robert even though it is a budget option, was able to pick up all of the large and small debris, and I was very, very pleased with its performance in the kitchen. 
It's unable to deal with any small stains on the floor because it only vacuums, there is no mop function. But the Robert was able to get right into the corners of the kitchen cabinet and all around the dining room table and chairs. Now, the Robert does come with a number of modes, included targeted areas, so you can target specifically areas you want it to hoover on. There's a perimeter mode, that, so it does the edges of the room, and there's another snaking mode, which brings it back and forth all the time. And these worked an absolute charm in all of these tests. It still felt a little bit random though, and I think on a more upmarket machine that has LiDAR scanning, you will have a much more comprehensive clean of your home. But for in its price class, this vacuum cleaner did blow me away. The final space in which I tested it was in the living room area which had a rug. Now, one of the things that I was worried about was the brushes catching the rug and pulling it up. And as you can see here in the footage, that is something that can happen. Thankfully, the Robert is able to deal with it most of the time, but there are points in which the brush motors will come off and the Robert will ultimately struggle to clean thereafter. Once the Robert had managed to get onto the living room rug, I was very impressed with just how well it dealt with the carpet. And I think, for the purposes of these tests, I think this is the fairest comparison you could make with a normal carpet. Now you can see here it doesn't get everything, but it does get almost everything. And I think for a lot of people that performance will be enough. The takeaway message that I would give prospective buyers of this device is that it is going to cut down the amount that you need to hoover using a conventional vacuum. In fact, it means now that instead of me hoovering twice a week, I now only have to hoover once a fortnight because the Robert does such a good job in picking up the heaviest pieces that fall. Now sure, it's not going to get everything, but it is very, very convenient, I have to say, and it is a real time saver. And ultimately, I think that's what these robot vacuums are all about. I think that's ultimately the bottom line of this product. It is not going to replace your mainstream vacuum. It is not going to be the end of hoovering in your home. However, I think it's going to save you an awful lot of time and get the vast majority of the dust and miscellaneous grime that you have in your homes, and it seems to work pretty well in my testing. Sure, it's not perfect, but at only £200, it seems to be doing pretty well for its price bracket, and I have to say, I was very pleasantly surprised with just how well it performed. Sure, the design has some flaws, especially the dock, but again, for the price that you pay compared to other robot vacuum cleaners on the market, I personally think this is very good value for money. So there you have it folks, there's the full review of the Robert R3000 vacuum cleaner. And my thanks must once again go to Robert for sending me out this vacuum cleaner to review. Here at HeyTechie, we do hold ourselves to the highest standard. So even though this was provided for free, all of the opinions expressed are 100% my own, and I absolutely refuse to work with a company who won't respect the independent nature of these reviews. What do you think of this robot Hoover? Would you be interested in picking one up? Let me know in the comments down below, I want to hear from you. And if you haven't already done so, make sure to go ahead now, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell icon too, so you get notified when my videos go live. If you want to get even more involved at Hey Techie, make sure to head on over to us on Instagram, where you can vote every Friday for the content of next week's video. Until next time then, I've been Stephen for Hey Techie.